Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, but we're working on a Mini Cooper today. Are you looking to improve the look of your paddle shifters on your steering wheel? Well, CT Carbon has a great option, and it's really not a hard install. I want to walk you through it. Let's get started. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and jump into this, and this really isn't a hard project, and will only take a few simple tools. Everything you need will be listed in the video description below, so you can make sure to check that out. We're gonna jump into this, and really, we're gonna take the existing OEM paddles off the steering wheel, which means we have to unplug our battery, we have to take our airbag off, a little bit of additional steps, but it really isn't all that hard, and I'm gonna walk you through every step along the way. All right, well, one of the very first, first things we wanna do is unplug your battery, so let's lift the hood and get started there. All right, guys, so to get your paddle shifters off, like I mentioned, we're gonna to have to, to unplug the battery because we're gonna take the airbag off. Never pull your airbag without pulling your battery. You can end up with an airbag error. You can have other issues there. It's just not worth it. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to pull the positive post off your battery. So here we are under the hood. We've popped the hood. There's a couple of covers that need to come off. You have these twist locks here. They are, you can see the little arrows. You're simply just going to twist those with a screwdriver. You can see they're a little bit loose and I'm twisting them with my fingers right at the moment. But twist those. You've got these little plastic nuts here. Once this cover comes off, you wanna go ahead and pull your trim off and then take an eight millimeter to pull out these screws here to pull this cover. Then we can get to the, to the positive post on our battery and go ahead and pull that off. I'll show you that really quickly once it's done and then we're gonna to transition to inside the car. All right, so as you can see, the plastics are off. I just wanna show the battery here really quick. So I've pulled the negative post. I might have said positive post a second ago. If I did, I didn't mean that. I meant the negative post. This is a 10 millimeter nut, so go ahead and just loosen that, pull it off. Now, there's a little bit of play in this, and I wouldn't want halfway through what we're doing this to flop back on its own as the car moves or vibrates, so I get in and out. So I just covered the negative post in a rubber glove just in case, all right? So let's go ahead and transition to the inside. We're gonna take the airbag off. All right, guys, so the next step is we're gonna take the airbag off. Now, this is, a little hard to show, so this airbag is actually already off. So I'm gonna show what the back of the airbag looks like so this makes more sense. So behind your paddles, right here, and on both sides, there are there are holes. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a small tool. You can take like a T25 driver. Flathead usually helps because you're gonna be pressing on a barb on the back of the airbag. So you come straight in through that hole and press on the bar. Now we haven't, unpre we haven't unhooked the airbag yet um, because I wanted to show you this in place. But when you look at this, you can see this is that retaining clip that we're looking at. There are hooks back here on the, the steering column itself right here that this retaining clip goes into, that the airbag hangs onto. So when you come up through the hole in the steering wheel, so like for example here on the door side, you're bringing the tool up and hitting this bar right here and pressing the bar in so it will come away from these hooks. There's this little plastic tab right here that is uh, providing tension, providing more tension for the bar. So it is possible to come in with the tool and you can see a little bit of a scrape mark right there. That's where the tool is coming up and pressing on the plastic. And you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing on the bar because you're pressing on the plastic. Well, okay, you're pressing on the retaining plastic, but you're not actually pulling that bar back. That bar is what has to come back. So you have to come through and a flat tool helps. So you can potentially use a flat screwdriver, but you have to make sure that it's perpendicular to the bar so you get the best grip. Come in and you press. So one side, one side will pop free, one side will start to pop free, and then you go in through the other hole and pop the other side free. Then the whole thing will be relatively loose. And then you can come up through the center, which like I said, right here, it's just a little plastic tab. It's not actually part of this bar. It's just a little plastic locking tab right here. So it doesn't provide a lot of tension, just a little bit. Okay, so the biggest secret to this is just patience. I'm taking airbags off. I've had an airbag come off in the very first attempt. So it's taken me, you know, 15 seconds. Just one side bang comes loose, the other side bang comes loose and it's off. And that's, that's that. I've had others that have taken me a long period of time and I just can't seem to find the locking bar and I struggle and struggle and struggle and change tools and struggle. But it really is just a matter of patience. And this reverse view that you can see hopefully will help you mentally kind of picture what you're trying to get your, your tool on as you come in through that hole to press on that retaining bar. Okay, once that's done, you can go ahead and pull down the little locking tab right here on the plug, unplug your airbag and set this, set this safely aside. Then we're gonna be pulling off uh, your, your buttons here on either side so we can get to the back side to actually pull your shift levers off. 
All right, so with your airbag, I pulled, like I said earlier, I pulled the main plug, but there's a secondary plug right here. I really kind of dislike these little plugs. They love to break. And as you can see, you've got enough room in the cable that you can just set this up on your steering columns. You don't necessarily have to unplug this, which is really nice. Now, it's almost impossible to show right now, but high on the back right here, you can feel their hole. There's a T20 screw on both sides. Those are the only screws that are holding uh, your controls into place. So you go ahead and pull those out on both sides. Now, this itself, is actually held in by two little flanged posts and then the long post that goes in to, for that screw. This is all fit, fit into this kind of rubbery surface. So basically you just have to work at it, work at it, be very, very patient as you work this off because it is really, really firm. So once you have it, you can see, you can see these little flanged posts on both sides that were holding on and you can see the post where the screw was. But as you can see, that's now, that's now out and loose and we can get here to underneath and we can start to actually get to our shifter controls back here. Okay, so go ahead and do both sides and then we're gonna start to take the paddles off. All right guys, so now that you've got the control off both sides, a little bit of a preview. You can see I've got the new paddle already on this side. But what you're gonna need to do is take off the existing paddle and then disassemble a little bit. The controls are gonna come out of the existing paddle and go into the new one. So you're gonna wanna unplug so these are one of those typical little BMW plugs. It's got a little, little bit of a locking tab. You can get your fingernail underneath it and pull it out. Go ahead and set it aside. There's also a T20 right here that I've already taken out. And it's the same on both sides. So I'm only going to show one side. But go ahead and take that T20 out. And now, to make it easier, I'm just going to pull the whole thing out. Because this plug will just rotate and will come through the steering wheel. As long as it's turned the correct orientation. And it will come out the back side. Okay? So that will give you the ability to actually pull this out. So what's keeping this in place, and you wanna be gentle when you do this, because obviously these are the electronic controls for your shifter paddles. So if you look right here, you can see that there's a pin that's holding this in place. There's two little hooks on the side and a pin that acts like a hinge on this side. So when you look at it, you'll see that one end is kind of pointy and one end is flat. This only comes out one direction. You wanna actually push on the pointy end because that's the end that was pushed in, right? When it went in. So go ahead and take a pick tool or a very small, like teeny tiny screwdriver or something similar, something pointy and push that pin out. Once that pin comes out, this whole assembly will come away from the paddle. Now, a couple of things. There's a spring in here and there's a little locking plate in here that goes over the top of the buttons. They might fall out if you're not careful. That's okay if they do. I'll show you what it looks like in just a second, but just don't be surprised like I was when you pull this off and, the, and a spring falls out. Okay, so go ahead and drive that pin out and I'll show you what the rest looks like. All right, guys, so once you get this off now, I've got it in the correct orientation. You can see that the spring is in place. If your spring falls out, there's a little pin that it's gonna go on, and there's only one place for it to go. And there's a little cover right here. Now, it's in place right now. It's kind of a C shape. It slides down into two little slots that covers the buttons that, that makes this controller work. Now, because when I took off the other side, this little piece fell off, and I was like, uh, where does that go? But it just slots down right there, so if it does come off, it's not a big deal, okay? So you, what you're gonna do, and I actually find that if I put it upside down, so if I take the new, can, the, the new paddle and put it on the top, I can kind of press this into place where the spring will be in the right place. I mean, normally you think you'd flip it the other way, right? You'd wanna flip it this way when you put it on, and potentially you could, but, I actually found that doing it upside down, pushing it up into the controller was the best way to keep not only this cover in place, but keep the spring in place as well. So once that's just pushing in the new controller, you can see how the, the pinholes right there where you drove that pin out will line up with the new loops in the new paddle. You just slide it in, drive the pin in, and you're done. All right, also as you can see, I've put the internals on the shifter back in. Uh, you, you put that pin in and then, and then you just take the paddle and just fit it back into place. Obviously you fit the cable back through the hole right here. You plug it back in, all the cables route really nicely. They've got this little cutout groove right here. So you can put the cable body back in that groove, tuck the cable down in into this cut right here. And then always check the paddle. I mean, it feels right. So it controls right, which means the spring is right. The hinge is working. All of that stuff is just fine. Okay, so go ahead and do both sides if you haven't already. Um, if you have, then it's just a matter of putting it back together. You're just going to take your buttons and just press them right back into place like they were before. So just be patient and just gently work them back through that foam as they press back into place. We're going to do that on both sides. Once both sides are done here, once these are back on, you can put the T25 or T20s, excuse me, that are here on the back, drive them back through to secure your buttons in place. Once that's all done, you've got your airbag. 
Now, putting your airbag back in place is a heck of a lot easier than taking it off. All you're going to do is just hold onto it and press it back into place to make sure that it snaps over the top of all of these clips. And then you can press on it. You can feel that it, it goes in and out for horn function and it feels normal. All in all, that's done. All of that said, then we're going to reconnect the battery, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's go ahead and put these buttons back on. We're going to put the airbag back on and you're almost done. All right, guys, so we're just going to go ahead and plug your battery back in. It's just going to be the reverse of what you did before, so I'm not going to show you a play-by-play. -play. Really simple. Go ahead and put your negative post back on, tighten down that 10 millimeter. You've got this plate that's going to go back back into place. Remember, with it, with your 8 millimeters, or your three 8 millimeters, put that top cover in with those little quarter-turn twist locks, and then make sure to put your rubber gasket back over this ridge. And you're all good to, all good to go. At that point, you're all done. Go ahead and clean up, put your tools away. Good job. All right, so go ahead and clean up, put your tools away, and you can tell this really isn't a hard install. Probably, I mean, really the hardest part of it all is getting the airbag off, and it really is just being patient about it. I've done it sometimes where it's come off very, very quickly, and other times it's taken me some time. But as you can tell from, from that view, it's really not that hard. It's just gonna matter of working at it. So I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully this has encouraged you to do the work yourself. And remember, the link for the product or anything you need will be in the video description below. While you're there, please click like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to my channel. You get notifications about upcoming projects and the like. And I have a ton of content I can't wait to show you. Appreciate you watching and I'll see you on my next video.